Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Well, what is this? Well, this is when we sit down at the end of the month and we go through all of the submissions into the uh, end of month review event. Each month, we, inv we invite our members to submit figures along a certain theme, and then I, uh, with targeted requests for feedback, I then review them, provide that feedback. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and I just want to say right up top, thank you to everybody who submitted. Uh, so, uh, what we've got now here is single figure this month. So this is for sort of normal size, not uh, non-larger scale, single figures. Uh, as usual, you can submit uh, up to one per month, and uh, you can, you know, I ask to please give me some a quick very quick, short description of what you're looking for feedback on. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in joining the PMP, hey, guess what? The link is right down below in the video. We'd love to have you. We welcome everybody from uh, beginners to masters, anyone interested in taking their next step on their hobby journey uh, is welcome to join our positive hobby focused community. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's jump on into this. So we begin uh, with Robin, uh, and he said he's painting for display and, uh, possible very light gaming, would love feedback on what to practice and improve, tried to push myself to get more variation of hue into the skin tones, unsure about the back, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so Robin, here's my basic, uh, feedback on you. Uh, I, I did, I've, I've looked all these over beforehand. Um, one, we need more contrast on the not skin parts. So like the bone is very flat. The red cloak is very flat. The fur is very flat, right? Like I understand the lighting you're trying to create there, but it doesn't have enough distinction in it. If that's true, if the light's up here, then I need more of this in shadow. I need more of the individual. Um, like if we're talking about display painting, which is how I'm going to judge this. The individual hairs need to be picked out with thin lines. The cloak itself needs to have more variance. Like it basically, you have two shadows and then it just goes to a flat red the rest of the place. The bone is too flat. Uh, there's too much of just sort of a single kind of ridge color there. Like it's all highlighted very similarly. There's no transition in the actual bone. Uh, and then on the skin, it is the, the best part. And you, it's clear you did a lot of work. Part of the challenge is if we look at this picture, a lot of your shadows, your five, remember one is always the brightest color, five is the deepest color. A lot of your shadows are too thin. They jump from basically five to three. You don't have any four. So you have all the muscles picked out and they're completely surrounded. And that's not what you want. There can be under shadows that pick them out. And then, but your, and your highest highlights can be relegated to the individual muscles. But something like the four and three should be connecting the muscle tissue on the top. It's kind of a weird thing to, to fully work through in your brain you have to balance it but effectively if you think about the abs right here this shouldn't be a shadow running all the way up here there should be like some of the mid-tone flesh tone connecting these two and then the top of this ab should have the highest highlight and the top of this ab should have the highest highlight so what's here right now you have it as a five the shadow between the one and the one needs to be a three whereas the shadow below the four needs to be a five so there's my feedback for you hope that helps robin all right Next up, uh, A, uh, first miniature painted in tide layer and oils. Um, so it says, you know, use it for gaming, but still trying to push toward a high tabletop standard, maybe display. We're, we're not at display, I'll, I'll say that. Um, so would love feedback on the overall contrast and the skin and the highlights. I mean, I, there's not enough highlights. The contrast on this is way too low. We are at like, there are two levels of highlights here. I need to go up to five. I mean, we're at like, we're very, very, very short way 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 more contrast on the skin on the bone on the metal on the hair everything like we're just too low on contrast and i suspect the reason is because you used oils and you did one pass so oils want to pull everything together they get very flat as they dry when you paint completely in oils you have to do at least two passes maybe more so you've got to stretch everything out you want to go way over what you think in the contrast like you need to go super high contrast on your initial sketch with oils like i mean if this is where you would be with acrylics, highest highlight and lowest low, you need to be at like this on oils, okay? Because once you blend them together, they're going to come down to this. So then once that's dry, then you go in with your second pass and you start feathering in higher highlights and feathering in deeper shadows. And that's really my main piece of feedback for you on this one. Everything is too drawn together. It feels like the oils just pulled everything in together. 
and we didn't go back and pick it all back out. And you can see it, like I said, in the leather, the skin, the horns, the hair. It's, it's kind of all of it. So that's my best advice for you. Hope that helps. Okay. Next up, Ivan. Uh, goal with this model is to make a competition-level squad, so I'm aiming for a very high standard, but not impossibly high. How is the non-metallic metal working out? Is there something you'd improve with the base? What are the tricks and ways to improve one's freehand for human-sized models? Okay. A lot of questions there. So... How is the non-metallic metal working out? Sure, uh, Infinity models are often done in non-metallic metal. And the answer is we're not really at competition level yet. And I'll tell you why when we go right here. Um, stuff like this being very rough, rough, too rough. Like, I understand you want brushed steel. Fine. Cool. That's all good. You can do that. But you can't have spots like this. You can't have spots like this, like this, like this, like this like this, right, where the transition is so hard and scrapey. Things that look better are things like up here on the on the writer where you've transitioned through all of the colors. The other thing you've got to <clears throat> watch for when you're doing something like this, it's about creating light lines down the miniature. So what I mean is here, your light isn't happening in any like readable way. It's just kind of around. It's rough and it's just sort of around, right? Whereas what you would want on this leg is for like the light to not only respect the shape, but then to have to create a light line here, right? So this is lit and then here and then this side here and then this going down here like a more vertical this side over here, and then this back a boot and back a boot here. So you're creating a shaft of light because what you're doing when you're doing non-metallic metal is you're creating a specular highlight. Where would the viewer's eye see the light when they look from that angle, right? And so, you know, that's kind of always the main challenge. So I think amongst, like, we need to get our highlights more in order. And then secondly, we need to really smooth these out. Like, I, I get the brush deal thing. I, I like doing little hashes too. But you've got to still go in and glaze over the top of them. you got to do a lot of different little hashes. It, it takes forever and um, to smooth it all down. Now, as to the base, you know, how much the base actually matters varies by painting competition. The, the biggest problem here is you have a road and it's just gray. Like, I don't see many just gray roads. Um, roads have dirt. Roads have color, right? Because nature creates color. You've got a sewer that's wet, that's going to have green and moss and things like that around it. You've got a, places where water would run into rivulets. Hence, there would be things like brown dirt and stuff like that that came in the rain or whatever, and then, you know, dried up and left those, left the, the dirt stain there, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the big things that jump out at me when I was looking at the piece. Um, now how to do free hands on human sized models. You keep practicing them over and over again. And when you do the individual one, you just refine and refine and refine and refine and refine and refine and refine until you like what it is. I wish there was a better way, but it's, it's that if there's ever a game that was just practice, boy, oh boy, is that it? Um, so there you go, Ivan. Uh, that's my feedback for you. I hope that helps. All right. Next up, Jared, uh, any feedback is welcome. Just looking to refine his skills. So you got good old Omega red here. Um, yeah, Omega looks pretty nice. Um, I like the placement of the specular highlights on the non-metallic. This feels good up top. Again, you're creating the light line. So this is what I was just talking about. So that that sells for me. Um, I find the color transitions in your in his cables, tentacles, whatever, um, to be pretty convincing. The I, I understand you're going for the yellow hair probably because it's a little more comic book style. That's fine. I would still work a little more blue-gray or something like that into the skin. It feels a little, um, it feels a little, uh, flat. So that would be my, my main piece of pushback. Like Omega Red skin is pretty white. I understand it's pretty comic booky, but when you're doing like ultra high variation metal like that, the hair is flat and the skin is flat. The red works for me. Okay. It feels like that needs to get a little more life into it as well. So that would be my sort of main area of feedback for you. Hope that helps. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so Alexis. Uh, hey, Vince, here's one of my killer boss. I think this is the best I can do for now, how to push further, especially on the general. What can I add? Sure. So a note on the pictures. Don't take pictures like this. This is very bad. Like, this is way, 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 way too direct of lighting. 
There are many articles. I have videos. There's an article on Games Workshop's website. Please take the time to look how to take proper photos. If you can see a shadow like this in the background, I cannot evaluate the miniature because it is being blown out and overexposed by light, right? You, if you can see this direct of a shadow, you have too much light on it, okay? So that's, like, I, in a digital format well, where all I have is the picture, all I can say is please take the time to actually put in good pictures. If you want feedback, please make the pictures good. Okay, so now stuff that I can see, all right? Um, the skin looks nice. It's hard, for, like, again, everything's overexposed, so some opinions may be off. Um, the, I like the skin the best. I like the pink and blue. I think that really works. The steel with sort of the green blue added, I think is also nice. Um, I think that's pretty good. Um, it's hard for me to really get into the detail, but you know, little stuff like the blade doesn't, I don't really have a good clean shot of the blade, but it feels a little flat. Um, things like the red, especially like the hair, they need more depth than to go up. Um, I'm not sure about the glowing eyes on the shield. That doesn't sell for me as glowing eyes. Go back and watch my my how to do either OSL or, or glowing eyes video. Um, either one of those will explain that you need to go from brightest point to mid-tone to dark ring to light glazed mid-tone. Because um, it's just not selling right now. It looks more like it got hit by paint than it does like glowing eyes. Um, so that's probably my biggest stuff I can tell. Little tiny things. Um, on figures like this, where they have stitched together cloth, pick out these stitches, like paint the stitches a different stitch color. It makes a huge difference because it creates more tiny points of contrast and visual confusion. So there you go. All right, next up, Lyndon, a uh, few pointers on your converted Bray Shaman. How can you take your painting to the next level? Sure. Um, so uh, it's a fun model, fun conversion, riding all the little birds. I like that. That's a, that's a fun touch. You know, what I see here is uh, a couple of things. When we're going from the reds to the yellows, we need to draw out that that blend a little more. It kind of jumps. It's a little rough. Um, we need more contrast on things like the bone, the black, the sword. The metals feel really, really, really flat. The wood of the haft, the skin that is showing. All these things need more contrast. So, you know, watching my videos on, on contrast and stuff like that. Same with the birds, by the way. Um, but all of those elements, just we need more value contrast. Um I think that the having the super bright color is fine. Um, your one thing that doesn't work here, by the way, compositionally, is this thing being magenta. This should just be the same color as this. When you think in color composition, one of the easiest ways to think about is triangles or circles. Okay, so make sure you've got those different elements. And you don't just add a spot color, especially not of a true hue, something saturated, and make it alone. Like, you've got red here. If this had just been the same red to yellow, you would have had the perfect color triangle. And we kind of ruined that with the magenta. Like, this has no friend. It doesn't need to be here. So it should just be the same red to orange transition as the or red to orange to yellow transition as the rest of the wings. So work on your contrast, and, uh, and that would be my biggest piece of feedback for you. Okay, next up. James, advice on how to improve minis without necessary just spending more time what core techniques or effects do you think are bang for the buck fundamentals to improving any paint job um i've been using more black lining after miniax videos and it helps i'd like to paint a single figure or small groups of models four to five hours per mini to a nice above tabletop span standard okay and yes photos do always show mistakes you haven't seen before yeah so i mean i think these models look nice and and yes they did does need more contrast right like i mean it is flat Contrast is like the number one way to get more uh, value out of what you're doing, but it does take time. Now, color composition can have other, is another big way, like if you just pick the right colors that work well together, that can have a big impact. You've used blue and orange here, which is perfectly fine. Um, the other thing I would say is making sure that, uh, you know, small details like texture or weathering or stuff like that can go a long way like you've got the leather straps and they're just like one layer of brown leather with maybe a lighter color around the edge i can't tell if that's just like where the contrast paint or something sunk in or if that was intentional um but like little bits of of more texture like i see you did a little on the the pistol holster you know getting that on the edges of that stuff having little scratches or cuts on the armor those kind of things don't take a huge amount of time investment you you know there that you can actually do it to a whole miniature in about five or ten minutes but it adds a lot of visual confusion and, and 
and just feeling of, of life uh, to the to the model. Um, so that's one thing I would say um, if you're talking about your like sort of time to value ratio, right? Um, beyond that, to making sure that um, you have the individual elements uh, all having the appropriate levels of contrast. Like if you push certain elements very high, you can allow others to be somewhat flat depending on the shine that they're meant to reflect. Um, you can also, if you're going to focus your attention, focus on the face. And the face doesn't quite have enough contrast. It needs more. Um, the pupils could be a little larger. Like the, the eyes are very small there. Like you can see my eyes, right? And most of my eyes are actually the my pupils, right? Um, or my irises, I suppose. Um, the, But like pushing the face to a really high level, people tend to just look at faces first. So if your face is really, really good, then people won't notice the rest of it, and, and they'll they'll forgive other sins. Um, other tricks you could go for if you wanted to establish like a high contrast but not spend a lot of time is you could look at how Richard Gray does his Space Marines. Um, you know he has recent videos and he's he's pushing contrast to the moon, right? But he's doing it very roughly and very quickly. Um, so he has these models that he's painting in in about the amount of time you're probably talking about, but he's doing it with both uh, both a, in a rougher way. So he is getting that texture I'm talking about. But he also is doing it with uh, extreme high contrast, and it's fast. So maybe check into that. Um, so those would be my tips for you. Overall, very nice mini. Um, I would I would have pushed the orange into maybe more of an orange orange, but it's fine. Okay, Dave uh, went for a grim bright look. Not a fan of edge highlights. Would like tips on the red in particular, as also not a fan of adding an orange or pink to red for highlights. Um, sure. So well, we got to do something here, Dave. That's the answer. So edge highlights are realistic. Like, I, I understand that, but edge highlights, the light does gather around edges. If I hold my ring up in the light you and you look at it closely, you'll see that there's light around the edge of the, the metal. And you can do it in a light way to establish more contrast. The reason you tend to use edge highlights is because they have a, visu a, a strong visual impact. Now, you can push the shadows on the red and just make your high red extremely visually saturated, like extremely saturated red, that's fine. But then you're still going to want to put white underneath it and then bring red glazes over the top to turn everything back to red to get an ultra saturated true red. And you want to use something that's an extremely high red pigment. So you can get away with that. There's nothing wrong with that choice. Uh, and then just go with very heavy shadows, right? Um, I will say in that case, something like edge highlights is really going to help because um, red does actually highlight into pink or an orange so like i understand if you don't like it but that is realism is red or orange if you go look at a red car and really look at it there's gonna be pink all over it but your brain has resolved it back to red because you're that's what your brain is there for it just makes images work right um most reds are actually pink in daylight uh because just that's the nature of the light how they interact with the light um but my advice would be, like, I think your shadows are fine, but if you're going to go for a true red, then use something like the white and then glaze over it with the red to get really, really strongly saturated, really intense, really bright true reds. And then maybe just on the upper sides, like, again, edge highlighting around everything, GW style is often unrealistic, but on upper angles or especially upward facing edges, light will gather there and a light thin edge highlight really will do an amazing amount, even if it's just on the tops, to show where light catches happen. So that would be my advice for you, Dave. Okay, next up, Justin, uh, trying to take it to the next level in my painting, entering some competitions, not yet with the expectation of winning, but just to push myself. Uh, I think my models are having a tough time standing out. Sure. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we definitely need, so if we're talking, again, competition, then more value contrast, more contrast of hue, like there's not in your blue, there's not enough hue, both value and contrast. What I mean by that is your white is feel or your blue feels pretty contrasty. It's not for something that's meant to be metallic. And like these infinity models are always rendered in this true metallic. We also need to make it more clean, more smooth. Um, things still look rough in the transition, which is always hard in blue because sky blue gets very chalky. It's very hard to do that. Um, you're also not evaluate. You're not, you're not resolving enough va va uh, variation of hue into things like the shadows. So with blue, you can bring purple, you can bring red, you can bring things like that into the shadows, um, which make them more visually compelling. Um, those little touches of hues in light shadows make the shadows feel different. So you you want to pick a, an overall color tone, 
are we talking light highlights? Then we need cold, or uh, sorry, um, are we talking uh, uh, warm highlights? Then we need cold shadows. If we're talking cold highlights, we need warm shadows and so on. Resolving things more cleanly as well is really the number one thing I see here. Um, so having more stronger definition lines between everything, like the contrast on the gun is very low and looking at the pistol, it's very rough, right? Like these individual areas look pretty rough in their transition. We've got to get in there and really smooth everything out and make sure that it has really, really tough definitions uh, between the elements. Like here's his jacket and here's his outer jacket. And you see how this doesn't have a dark line between it. That's, that's why the image doesn't look as good as other things you see because connecting items create occlusion shadows and we represent that generally by some kind of dark line or recess shading or deep recess shading or something like that and that's what's missing from your work and it's also making it look not as clean as it could be so resolving those kinds of things will also be an advantage for you um yeah uh the other the only other notes you know as you push toward things like competition painting you want to make sure that you like this doesn't need to be red it should not be red this is just compositional stuff like you never put a red thing near uh, alone like this is the only basic red element other than a few other tiny little hidden areas you never put that on the ground with this with all these bright pop colors red and green right because the challenge is the that draws all the attention away from the, your figure red always draws the eye it's the warmest place on the model and that's where your eye looks human eyes are trained to track toward the color red and you have very little other red so when i look at the model straight on all i look at is his feet there's no movement around the figure all right um, the freehand still looks rough, so if we're talking competition level freehand, everything has to be pristine and clean and sharp. So you want to make sure you go in and really, like, after you've drawn it, you have to go back in with the blues and everything, and you've got to clean all that up, and it's got to be razor sharp. Uh, so that kind of stuff. Uh, hope that helps, Justin. Okay, next up, Jim. Uh, goal was to avoid using normal fire colors, so I ended up with this color scheme. Could I get opinions on color scheme, OSL, and any other strengths or weaknesses? Sure. So uh, I don't mind the white to magenta to purple fire. It's perfectly valid. You do need to have another step there in between the white and the pink. Um, like there needs to be a middle step there. There's, it's kind of, it's resolving a little too rough and it needs more transition. Go back to my, my lava uh, blade video and you'll see what I'm talking about as far as that goes. Um, as far as how to resolve those individual steps. Like you can resolve them through stippling, but then you've still got a glaze to bring things together. Now, as to the OSL, I mean, there's not really a huge amount of it here. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like OSL. Like, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, this has a little purple glow. This has a little purple glow. It's not really resolving in the way I would expect it to do. Like, with OSL, you, my general recommendation is just don't do OSL. It's a very hard effect to pull off. But beyond that, when you do OSL, you have to pick the model. And the first thing you want to do is imagine you put a, a circle on the model and you say that's the area that the the light will shine on okay so like if that's true if that's reflecting in that area then it's going to be the weakest around the edge and get brighter toward the middle and then the thing that's casting the light has to be brighter than any cast light by far in addition, the cast light has to create shadows. So if this is glowing purple, this needs to be a shadow pretty deep on the other side of this. Okay? When you create light, again, in a normal lighting situation, almost nothing happens. Right? Like, that's my hand. That's the OSL from it. There's not a lot of light. If I bring that near my face, the lighting doesn't change very much on my face. Like, a slight glow. Right? Let's see how there's a tiny bit of orange yellow on my face. Okay? That's the kind of effect you have to fade out to. And the circle of light there that I would have established would have been lightly on my cheek and then in my hand and nothing more because I'm in a bright lighting condition, which is where models normally are, unless you paint them to be in shadow and you didn't here. There's, there's, you know, pl there's plenty normal light sources on this guy. So that's my main piece of feedback for you there. Uh, hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Daniel. Where do you think I should focus on improving the most? Could you please critique the model in general? Don't hold back. Okay, sure. Uh, that's fine. So I think it looks really nice. Um, I like the shield. I like the general color scheme. That like green to blue sort of Van Gogh color scheme is, is a really nice touch. Um, your scales are individually separated. The, um, where are we going to get to it? There we go. Um, things that, so I, I like all of that. 
the areas where I would improve are the metals are still pretty flat. Um, like I see that you did do some work on some shading. So that's good. Keep pushing that. Uh, you know, maybe looking at it more. Maybe they're not as flat as I thought. It's hard to tell with the lighting. Push it more. Like bring a little more shadow, bring a little more light to it. But I take that back. Your metals are going the right direction. It looks like you're doing some stuff. Keep going. So then the 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 sort of, I don't know, Caucasian skin colored skin, I guess, for lack of a better term. This this color here, this feels pretty flat. And then on the scales themselves, they don't have any life to them. What I mean by that is that color transition is cool, but there's not enough texture there. Um, and then the last note I would say is make sure that your individual elements like the jewelry and things like that, again, are separated by nice dark lines. It doesn't have to be like a black lining, but you know, you look at like the arm compared to this bracelet, there should be an occlusion shadow there between it, right? Like when you look at my hand, look at this, look right here. See, this is my shirt. This is my arm. Look what's right here. What's that? That's a shadow. See that everybody see the occlusion shadow in my in my in between my hand and my sleeve, right? That's what you're capturing with black lining. And what will make something look very unrealistic is if you just go straight from bright color, bright color, no shadow in between. It just it reads as false instantly. Like your brain is trained to see that. And so that would be one of the pieces of advice I'd give you there, Dan. All right, next up, Brian converted this to run as a branch wraith. Cool conversion. Where I'm really struggling is on the lighting. In this particular case, if I fade the clothing from a dark to a light color going down, I have no idea how to make it look like light is coming from above if the lighter color is at the bottom. Sure, it's the traditional spooky ghost problem when you fade out to light. So the answer is you need to do both. So you need to stop thinking of it like you're fading. That's your total volume, okay? It's the inverse pyramid concept. All right, start at the top. The broadest areas of the miniature what we care about, the entire cylinder of the miniature, right? And so you're going from blue to a brighter color. That's your general transition. Great, that's your broader. Now we need to go smaller into the detail. So as I go down, the top of this fold, the top of this fold, this is going to be in bright blue, this is going to be in bright blue, this is going to be in bright blue. I'm going to push deeper shadows in here. When I get down to this area, I'm going to take whatever this part of the cloak is, the normal area that would be highlighted. This edge is going to be super bright. This is going to be super bright. This is going to be super bright green, right? So whatever color you happen to be in, in the spectrum, it needs to be the brighter version of that. And by the way, this isn't like you're, you're, you're letting yourself trick yourself, okay? Wear a dark shirt with white pants. There, you just went from dark to white at the bottom. Is there any re reason why highlights still wouldn't apply as normal? No, of course not, right? Like the part of the white pants that are facing up are going to be bright white. The part that are down below are going to be gray. Easy, right? You as the cylinder would have the same color transition that your model has, right? So the same rules apply. doesn't matter if it gets brighter near the ground. It's not as though like volumetric highlighting means that, you know, suddenly the model has to be bright, dark or something like that. That's That's not what it means, right? It just means in general, light gathers around the top. The uh, So that would be my advice for you. The only other, a couple other things I noticed is, again, the golds look pretty flat, so maybe you'd want to go in and maybe pop some of that out with some silver highlights and stuff like that. Okay. Next up, Tassos. Uh, looking forward to the review. Sure. Well, this guy's very nice. Uh, it's a great figure. I think he did a really nice job with him. Everything looks, you know, very clean. Uh, I like the I like the transitions in the red quite a bit. Those feel very natural. Good catch of like a soft, warm light. So that's selling for me. Um, the tinted metal up here doesn't sell for me because it feels like the steel has just been covered in like a athermatic blue contrast paint or something like that. And there's no real life to it. There's no directionality to the lighting. We just kind of tinted it all blue. I would need to go, I would need to see darker shadows, higher highlights, more lighting in a non-metallic way um, to capture that. Same with all the gold. The gold all feels very flat. Um, the creature itself needs more shadows in its muscularity. Um, there's a little bit of very soft shadows, but I'd want to see more of that. I'd also like to see the individual feathers and fur and stuff picked out, as well as freehanding some individual little tiny uh, elements onto the, um, you know, a fur around it to sort of blend it in. 
Final note is whenever we have these sunken in details in banners, which I absolutely despise, but when they happen, it's just a good idea to darken them. It's a you're you're really just wasting an opportunity here. If you want to go super try hard mode, then you edge highlight the top edges of all of them as well, but that's, you know, annoying. But at the very minimum, these should be darkened, like more than they are. You know, like take them way down so they're shadowed. Because not only does that then say why they put those there, like assumingly they put letters or words or something on their banner so it can be red. So blue on blue isn't going to do that. You know, somebody five feet away from this guy can't. What's your banner say? What? I can't read that. Right? He's, he's putting it here for a reason. So, um, you know, that would be my, my big advice there. Make it dark. Not only does it make sense in the world, and there's a verisimilitude to it, but it also then gives you another instance of light to dark contrast that'll sell. So there you go. All right, next up, Connor. Uh, okay, uh, pushed himself to the limit for this. The best thing you've painted so far. I'd love some tips on smoother transitions. Um, sure. So, I mean, uh, it looks very nice, uh, I'll say. I really like a lot of what you, you've got going on here. Now, the part of the trick with smoother transitions is just, you know, glazing down at the end. Like, the end of almost every road when it comes to getting things smooth is glazing. And like when I look at the reds and the roughness there or stuff like that, or the, some of the skin roughness or like, especially this black to gray. Yeah. It's, you know, maybe you start with a little wet blending, maybe you do a little feathering, maybe you do a little, um, you know, glazing, whatever the story, it's going to be those things. Like you, you have this great rough style where you're setting in high values. I like that. That's nice. That's good. Like it's understanding value is the hardest part and you're pushing it to a high enough contrast. We then just got to bring it together with either that glazing or blending or something like that at the end to really get things together. Um, the um, So that would be my main piece of advice there for you. And that's going to really help with things like this little glow effect you're trying. Like when you have a hard layer like this, like that's not a glow. She just has green paint on her on her uh, calves, right? If But if we had a soft glaze around that where it blended into the skin, that would sell the effect. So... Um, that's my best advice for you, Connor. Hope that helps. Uh, watch my Achieving Smooth Blends video if you haven't already. That'll that'll help get you in the right place. All right, next up, Miguel. Uh, so, it's just another boring ultramarine. That's fine. You know, ultramarines are fine. I would like some general feedback to guide me to the next level, specifically in the highlights, volumetric, and edge, and the base also. I tried to follow the Mars base. Yeah, base looks fine. Good stuff. No issues there. Um, highlights are looking good. It's coming along. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he looks really nice. Um, things like the, I assume you mean on the armor, things like the gun are really flat. So like a lot of your other elements, the, the leather actually is way more, uh, contrasted than the, than the gun and the sword. So I would work on that. Um, you can push your highlights even farther through individual light glints. So if this, if that's your general level of highlight, that's fine, but then it can still be good to just like do some thin, areas not an edge but like a very thin area like on the top of these circles here like a, a light in the center of this where the light is really strongly reflecting you can sell a, a lot of value through very small volumes of highlights so like here you'd need like maybe a little slightly brighter area doing like boop, 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 like that i mean we're talking millimeters okay and you'll be amazed at how much suddenly it makes the contrast pop. The other thing I notice when I'm looking at it is that he doesn't quite have enough dark in him. So I'd bring down, bring in a little more five. Your highlights are are, are very comfortable to me, but your shadows are lacking in, in most places. I'd love to see a little more purple, deep red, even black, whatever. You can pick whatever you want, but glazed into those shadows. And I think things in like the red gun and the steel and stuff like that could also benefit from that as well. Um... But yeah, this is a really nice looking piece, man. I mean, I, the 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 gold is still flat, so you know, keep working on that. I've got lots of videos there. Take that to the same like right now. The challenge you have is the blue has more contrast than your shiny shiny metal. So your enameled, not completely full metallic blue is not has more shine in how you've rendered it than the gold. That's a challenge, right? That's that's where I would see the opportunity to improve. So there you go. All right, next up, uh, Pavel, uh, painting for one and a half year. Thought it's time to bump my skills and try to face uh, the mask from the very same model painted by Bohun. I think I'm kind of close to this effect. I would love to hear any feedback on how to move further with my skills. What's next? Sure. 
Yeah, so I think this looks very nice. Um, Bohun's was a, a very nice version of this. I think you, you did pretty well in rendering that off of what he did. And by the way, that's a great way to improve. Um, I just want to take a moment to, like, let me just give everybody permission. Copy me, copy any other artist you see out there. Try to look at what they did, reverse engineer it, and then do it yourself. It's actually one of the best ways to improve. Um, and when you're writing, this is actually a writing prompt. You you start with somebody else's story, you write, you use their first paragraph, and then you write your own story off of it, right? Um, the, those prompts are valuable for a reason because they set you on a path and help you refine your skills against an established benchmark. Um, I really like the blue uh the cross hatching i think he did a nice job of pulling that out um the horns feel a little less interactive than they could be they're not they're not quite showing the value contrast i would expect so a little more thin lines a little more pushed contrast on those i would really like the the horse body itself feels really dark i like that you're going for the fur texture you seem to be using like the fur video that i had and i'm i'm, I'm, I'm picking up on that but i think maybe in the final glaze it got a little too dark Maybe we need to come back in and build a little bit of that highlight back in. There's not enough tonal variation on the uh, horse body. So that's kind of my individual thoughts. Overall, this, is, this looks really nice. I think you did a good job, Pavel. Okay, next up, Arturo. Uh, all right, it's a sculpt of the mountain from Game of Thrones, except I don't actually play a war game, so I painted it to look like an iron golem. Uh, riding another iron golem, arcane fire burning inside them to provide power and automation, an excuse for interesting light effects. Sure. All right, let's take a look. Uh, so yeah, this is fun. Um, again, so some of the things I mentioned earlier in the non-metallic metal is good. I don't mind a small volume. You're again using like the hashy line style of brushed steel. That's fine. Um, to get the darker metal you still do need to go back and smooth that out you know we don't have to increase the volumes but we need to smooth the white to blue the blue to blue gray and the blue gray to deep sea blue or dark black right like those still need to smooth those transitions that would be my number one thing the sword itself doesn't resolve bright enough for me so like i can buy he's in dark black armor but the sword would seem to gleam because it's actually like highly polished bright steel not black iron or something so it should have more light to it, more reflection, and more, again, like watch some of my recent non-metallic metal videos about using and creating light triangles and repetitive and different size light triangles, stuff like that. That's going to really help you out. Um, now, I do like the inner fire effect. That that sells for me. Um, I think you you did a really good job with that there, um, which, is, which is impressive because that's actually a really hard effect to sell. So um, so I'm, I'm appreciative of what you did there, but you did a nice job of creating the right the brightest light and then dark and then just like something very soft around it so you, you followed the basic uh run there so yeah good stuff i'd say some refinement and smoothing and you're you're on a, you're on a, a good road there okay next up nathan uh painting for just over four months now uh model is base coat reikland flesh aid null and oil and then dry brush highlights direction for judgment is am i on the right path um I mean, that's a pretty simple work stream. If you're going for something sort of like grim, dark, and simple and dirty, sure. I mean, if you're looking to, if like, if, if it depends on what you want, right? I don't know that there's a right answer to that question. If this is what you're aiming at and you want that kind of quality, then sure. Yeah, you're fine. You can keep going like that, right? But in the end, if you're trying to improve your quality, then you're going to want to move away from doing things like using washes and stuff like that extensively and, and trying to, and you want to be placing shadows and placing highlights and things like that. I have a lot of videos on this. I would recommend to go watch them. But if you're looking for like a gritty, quick, grim, dark thing, sure, it works for that. So it's a tricky thing because I'm not sure what you want to improve on, Nathan, or the direction you want to go. Um, once you watch this, if you want to hit me up in the comments, I'm, I'm happy to discuss with you more. But it, does it work? Sure. Does it look good? Eh, it looks okay. You know, like, again, it's fine for what it is. If you're going for just like, yeah, I want something cool and gritty and grim dark on the tabletop, then yeah, you're great. You're fine. Keep going, right? If you're looking to push into a higher quality, then it's not really the right road to use that kind of a workflow. So it's not as though there are good or bad techniques. There are good or bad techniques based on your end goal. So hope that helps. All right, next up, Jen, uh, Oath of Glory Paladin, uh, Kyothi for my not regular enough D&D &D game. Uh, not going to display quality. I know the fur is a little chunky. Feedback on the skin, hair, face, and the OSL on the shield. Sure. So the skin is too flat, uh, as I've said many times. More contrast, more tonal variation, more variation of value and hue. 
skin, especially female skin, often needs to show a lot of soft, broad transitions uh, to, to sell the effect. So you want to work in not only super high highlights to show the satin nature of skin, that is to say, especially a, uh, a warrior woman like this who would be, you know, out fighting and she's clearly in like an action pose, so she's going to be sweating. And so in that uh, situation, your skin actually gets very reflective. Like, you know, go look at like an athlete uh like a beach volleyball player or something or whatever you know they have they're like glistening because they're so sweaty it's out in the bright sun and you know and then but they also have like a lot of deep shadows because they also are in bright light and as you're running and pumping there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of blood so you're gonna see a lot of reds and deep shadows in the skin from the cast light and stuff like that so the skin definitely needs more work um more contrast i have lots of videos on painting skin i would recommend you check those out um so the hair, or then and the uh, hair in the OSL. Okay, so let's do the shield here. Um, the shield doesn't read to me as OSL. It's a nice effect. I'm not sure what's meant to be glowing. Nothing about the shield glows to me. Um, again, I have videos on glowing effects, but to repeat myself again, bright central thing. Cast like light around it that it, bright one around two dark three soft two in a fading glaze around. It's the simplest technique, right? But that's that's what a glow is, okay? Um, so that's, I like the effect. I think it looks cool. It's very eye-catching. It's not OSL, but that's fine. It works for me. Um, I think you're trying to maybe catch some of the light on the edges of the wood, but that's that's not what that looks like to me. Um, and nor would it necessarily glow like that because that's a shield pulling away from it. The light is going out. So it's just not really a place where you can sell an OSL effect like that, really. Um, again, same with the, my same advice with the face would go for the, um, would go for the rest of the skin only even more. So you need, you know, more color, more smooth transitions, stuff like that. Um, now on the hair, um, it needs more deep shadows, more individual of the elements picked out, stuff like that. But again, it's, it feels like you were going for tabletop. It's made to be play with. The hair is actually, I think the strongest part it does. You still got a lot of good colors in here and you're picking out a lot of the right areas. So, you know, if you're like a tabletop standard, it's fine. If you're going for higher quality, then you would need to work in more shadows, more strands, more highlights, and more specular highlights into the hair because hair is very satin. So uh, there you go. Hope that all helps. All right. Uh, I don't, I'm not even going to try with that first name. I'm just going to say Daniel. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Greetings from Taiwan. I'm Daniel. Uh, Black Templars Marshall for the Black Templar Codex. I'm aiming for realistic looks for most of my work, so I worked hard on metal glowing, non-metallic metal, leather textures for the tavern, free hands. Uh, sure, even though I worked hard on the details, I think it doesn't have a focus point or eye-catching part. I'm not sure why. Sure. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy. So, um, that's a fun that's a fun detail you tried to pull out there. It needs to be cleaned up. I mean, that's part of the issue. Okay, so why doesn't this have a focal point? Because there's too much scritchy scratchy all over it that's not directing the eye in any reasonable way. That's the challenge. Everything is so heavily textured and so rough that your eye isn't resolving to any one place. Okay. Um, it's also like really bright everywhere. The axe has a super bright point that goes to white. The armors have super bright points. The skin has super bright points. Like everything is going to a really, really, really high value. And so it's hard to resolve that. Like we don't respect the overall volumetric highlighting that draws the attention up here. So if it was just like the top armor and then the face, you know, if the, if that was there, then sure. If the the face, I don't have a problem with. You're really pushing the value and trying to draw attention there. The issue is that then we have a lot of like other things going on. And there's nothing on this fig that is muted, right? Everything is just like intensity in ten cities. And, and that's the problem, right? What we need is some softness. We need more soft shadows. Like everything's so rough, everything's so visually confusing. There's too much noise. Visual confusion can help hide sins. It helps make things look more interesting. But when we have this much, it then becomes overwhelming, right? So that's why there's no place for my eye to land and just smoothly travel. So the texture and the, the scratching and stuff like that has now overwhelmed the rest of the piece, okay? Um, on the gold non-metallic metal, that's not really selling for me. There's not enough yellow. There's not enough deep sort of ochre color to it. Not enough sort of either brown or black brown or whatever in the shadows, depending on if you're going for warm or cold non-metallic metal. Um, that's a challenge that that's there. Overall, it's a cool piece. Um, with the, I like the little kneecap attempt. That's fun. It needs a little more uh, resolution. 
like what you can see here like look at this piece look at this piece right this isn't as clean so when you do something like this you keep pushing and keep cleaning and refining get those dark black edges around it like your face doesn't have the dark look see how he has these dark black edges around everything here that's so the face stands out you don't have those right that kind of little stuff so make sure you're getting the whole image of what it is um overall very cool piece um you know it's it's really nice like he is he is grim dark in the extreme but you want to make sure you you uh are still smoothing some of that stuff out like don't let the texture completely take over um resolve the highlights in a more direct way okay all right next up clayton uh painting for a year and entered this for a competition at my local hobby store when uh dominion launched i painted this in three weeks and this is the best i can manage i'm after um you know feedback on what i did well and what needs to bring work um okay so it's it's nice there's definitely some more work we can do here um i like the gold i think that's working well for me up here the wings are way too flat and boring and what i mean by that is it's just like brown white black we have all this beautiful texture all these beautiful layers between the wings and we're just doing nothing with them just nothing okay so that definitely needs a lot of attention like i have a video on painting detailed wings um the steel here needs to be smoothed out a little bit the white is very flat i need to resolve more grays and things like that in there to to bring more value contrast into the white you can also use soft blues um, to again bring more variation of hue in as well both types of contrast are quite valuable so those that's kind of what i would say there are contrast on other elements like the red the red is all very flat the paper tad the, the whole of sacred toilet paper is also very flat so that's the kind of stuff i would focus in on if i was you um just again pushing that contrast on those other elements um you know as you think about painting for competition the key with painting for competition is every piece of the mini has to go to the highest level possible right that's the nature of competition painting you had said i did it and i had a limited amount of time that right there tells me it's not actually competition painting i know you entered it in a competition but competition is i don't paint to time i paint to quality time be you know damned as it were right um like if it takes me five months then to get it to the quality level it needs to be at that's the amount of time it takes so you know that's the essence of competition painting right is that you paint until you're insane or you die or you finish it that's it um those are the choices uh so that would be my feedback for you i hope that helps okay liam uh first 75 millimeter scale piece my third miniature painted with non-metallic metal feedback on the face and the nmm in particular sure this is a really nice piece, Liam. I, I like this a lot. I looked at this. I'm, I'm digging the heck out of this. It's a great piece. Um, great 75 millimeter piece. Um, I really enjoy some of the non-metallic colors you've worked in here. The shield is a little, on this side, a little like, eh, it's okay. Like we're just kind of going for this banding light and all the bands are kind of the same size. That piece doesn't sell as much to me, but I really love how you've resolved the steel. I think the face works. I see enough variation of hue and value there. Um, I really like the the weapon up here and the different color transitions we're going through. That's all selling for me. Um, I quite like the shield, you know, the steel. These things are resolving for me in a really nice way. You're really capturing these colors very smoothly. I wish I had a more a more zoomed in picture, like your a note on picture taking for a model like this. This is probably too far away. Um, I know you're trying to capture the whole base. That's fine, but like, give me a higher quality one that's closer up. That way it's easier to look at. But I I think this guy's a triumph, man uh i think you're absolutely killing it over here it's, there's a there's a few few very small areas of feedback i'd give you like i mentioned the banding around the shield think about how you'd vary that how the light would be catching other things stuff like that but it's solid as so good stuff great job all right next up joel painting a little practice goblin away from home and had to pack like so i only brought black white red blue and yellow exercise and mixing colors no basing materials just started painting some flags that's on yeah that's fine that works perfectly fine focuses on working on non-metallic metal and texture um yeah so the um i see where you're going for the texture it's fun um i would say that the skin you know you've got you had red right yeah you got red because you got a red there you couldn't have resolved red without it um so 
you know, like the skin is an opportunity for, for more colors to be worked in. But I'll focus on the items you want. The non-metallic metal blade doesn't quite sell for me because it's too sketchy. Like the lines are a little too much. You know, I need to see some glazes and actual transitions between that. You can start with those lines, but then they have to come smoothed back down. Right? So um, that's there. What was your other item? I'm sorry. The non-metallic metal. Oh, and texture. Yeah, the texture's still pretty minimal. We could go a lot farther on that. The the blue feels okay, but it's a lot of the same texture. It's just like we kind of went hashy on some stuff. There's no dots, stipples, scratches, hashes, dots, you know, that kind of stuff around that varies the texture and shows me some different things. Also, your your metal scratches here aren't super working for me. They're inverted. Like, I understand you're probably trying to show metal underneath where it got scraped, but the dark should be the top always, and the light should be underneath it. Um, your eye just expects that. Otherwise, it just looks like a little worm that's crawling across the top, and the black underneath is his occlusion shadow. So that would be my main feedback for you there, brother. Hope that helps. All right, Rowan. First attempt at a dark skin tone on a model. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it, but I think it's not contrasted enough and looks kind of flat. What colors do you use to add contrast and shadows to dark skin tone? Well, so I have a video on this, and I would recommend you go watch my dark skin tone video because that will give you the long answer. But the short answer is on darker skin tones, you you establish in normal like Caucasian flesh tones as the, as the highlights. You use you work through oranges to create variation of hue because that orange is the sort of base color from uh, all skin. And uh, and then you work down into like things like purples in the shadows and stuff like that, which it already looks like you were doing a little bit of here. So that's that's a good instinct. But yes, there's not quite enough contrast, and that's how I would push it. So check out that dark skin video, and I think that'll give you a lot of good ideas on how to go forward. All right, Apollo, uh, I'd like some feedback on my yellow armor, non-metallic metal, and free hand. All right, so yellow armor looking really choice i enjoy it it's bright it's kicking it's got some nice highlights on it i'd like to see a little more shadows maybe pushing into a light brown kind of rusty type color like a light rust that's minimal i like it overall it's it's punches like a like a mac truck so i love it um but yeah more shadow more five and four your three two one looking great um, the gold non-metallic metal, I've seen this sort of this exact style. Looks generally pretty good. I'd brinch. It feels like it needs some more glazes of yellows, maybe a little more reflections in the, a couple of points of light catches. It, it, like the gold doesn't have the light catches of the little specular lights that are catching on there, like little dots of white and stuff like that. It's not quite enough yellow, quite enough three pushing out. I understand you're going for smaller volumes. I'm cool with that. It can sell. You still need to kind of take a yellow glaze over it. To make it feel like it's still gold, it's just shadowed gold. When you're still resolving kind of true black, it's not selling enough. It sells better on the, I don't know, the circly thing up top, this, because there's because it's broader, you accidentally push more yellow into the, the angle of the thing, and that resolves better for me. Uh, so that, that looks good. Um, yellow armor, gold, non-metallic. What was your other one? Uh, oh, free hands. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so let's take a look at the icon. I dig it. Uh, you could do another little pass with your black and really, really sharp brush to just kind of smooth out that circle. It's still a little rough. I can tell it's a little bit uneven. It's the, you know, you want to prove you're a great artist, paint a circle in one try, right? And um, that would be my only thing that I would grab there. But yeah, overall, it's a good logo. I think you did it very nicely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Push a little more highlight into it. Like, you've got this white up here. The, the, the top of the finger should be resolving a little more gray because they're sitting in light. Like, your free hand is ignoring the light. You don't want that to happen. You want there to still be, um, you know, respecting the shadows there. All right, next up. Uh, Masik? I'm not sure. Okay, beginning of your painting journey. I know everything is ahead of me. What should I focus on the most now? Um, I mean, this early in the journey, my my, my friend, um, and I saw your you shared one from your son as well later. You know, you're you're still at the. It's not the point where I can really give you a lot of feedback, like because it'd be everything, right? But if we're going to talk about what do you focus on immediately, clean brush application, brush control, and understanding like highlights and shadows, understanding value contrast. 
you know, that's going to get pay the most dividends for you as you go forward in your hobby. There's a lot of videos I've got on the channel. Check those all out and, and you know, it's going to kind of take you through. I've even got a, a playlist specifically for beginners with a lot of different information in there. So that's kind of where I'd recommend you look. All right, Kim, uh, first submission here, painted an Empire Army to a pretty basic tabletop standard several years ago. Uh, any feedback is greatly appreciated, particularly on highlighting and my lack of brush control. Sure, so I mean, you know, in the end, brush control is a thing you earn. It's not a thing you do. It's something you get by practice over and over again and uh, setting your hands in the right way and holding your brush in the right way and having the right amount of properly thinned paint on your brush and stuff like that. Um, your metals feel very flat. Go watch my non-metallic metal or true metallic metals in a non-metallic style video. I have probably five of them, so go watch any of those. Um, you know, do for, yeah, cleanliness is going to be a thing for you uh, to focus on. I can see some of the you know uh, some of the areas, and then you want to think about stuff like weathering and stuff like that to add these different areas to add more visual interest to these different areas. They're really kind of flat when you get these big metals, so a little bit of weathering can go a long way. So I would focus on some cleanliness. I would focus on bringing more contrast into the metallics through controlled application of additional colors, shadows, inks, things like that, as well as the highlights, and then look at things like weathering, and which will add very variation of value. So there you go. All right, Patrick, uh, painted up a mummy for the month of October, tried to feel like he's in a tomb environment while working in my basics. Um, sure, so, um, you know, mummies are classically hard to paint. He looks very nice. I mean, it's still really rough. Like some of the sash, it doesn't feel textured. It just feels like just rough, like with the paint. You want to be a little more controlled. The the hash lines and the, the difference between that, by the way, is the size of the hash lines. In scale, those kinds of things you're painting would be hyper, 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 hyper thin and, and tiny, right? So you've got to really get in there and smooth them. Um, on the skin with the sort of green, again, you know, that needs to be smoothed out more. It doesn't look like this kind of figure isn't doing you any, any favors, but... Again, more value contrast, and as with all green skin, more variation of hue as well, working in other colors, especially into the shadows, reds, purples, etc., to make them more visually compelling. So um, the, the wraps do feel appropriately dank. I like the greens and stuff you worked in there, so that works fine for me. All right. Uh, Adrian, closed my first year of miniature painting. I thought Sig Vault would be a great experience for my first non-metallic piece. And uh, boy, was I right. I appreciate some feedback on my NNM and highlight placement overall. Sure. So um, it's nice. We got to push farther. Um, my strong advice with this would be go take a look at somebody like Andy Wardle's artwork. He did a, a non-metallic version of this guy and so on, right? The challenge here is we don't have, we're not catching the secondary reflections. Um, go look up Darren Latham's blog, so Raza Miniature Painting, and look up his old Sigvald. Um, and his, he has a whole article on non metallic metal. If you just search for like Darren Latham blog non metallic metal, you'll find the blog entry. And, you know, he talks about primary and secondary highlights and a lot of the colors and so like that. Part of the problem is you're not coming up high enough, you're not distributing your, your highlights in quite the correct way. The trick is if you used, if you took this miniature and held it under the light, that's not how it would look if it was metal. Because you're holding it under like satin primer. Metal is way more reflective than that. So the highlights need to be broader. They'll be catching in different places. They'll be more specular to your eyes. There'll be secondary reflections and stuff like that. So non-metallic metals are a really complicated journey to go on. I have several videos on non-metallic metal. I'm sure I'll do more. Go check out my videos. Go check out that blog. Go check out there. Because we're just... We're not quite there. We don't have enough value contrast. The highlights aren't in quite the right places because uh, sadly, like a value sketch like that really isn't going to completely nail what you need to do when you're thinking about the placement of secondary highlights. So there you go. All right, next up, uh, Bartaz. Feedback on my converted butcher. Uh, any feedback on the indigo flesh? Thoughts on the blood splatter? Um, sure. Uh, I like the flesh could push into a little bit deeper shadows actually I think is the issue I like where your wounds are you push into that magenta I think that's good I think my only I like the highlights not quite enough shadow um, blood spatter yeah fine good different layers it sells there's some couple big chunks um, when he's got that much spatter you may want to think about actually building up some texture in some places as well like that is to say I actually have viscera hanging off of it you know 
um, little pieces of brain matter and things like that. But but the spray pattern mostly works for me. I'm, I'm okay with that. A little bit more scattered middle red. Like it feels like we don't have enough middle red, like blood that's dried for a middle amount of time. Like the old dried blood is really scattered everywhere and the fresh stuff is kind of really localized. And that, that's the only part of it that feels off to me, right? Like, they should be both distributed in some kind of way. Like, sure, the dried blood is going to be in more places, but the the uh, the um, red blood is not going to be just in, like, sort of one place, right? So also think about splatter patterns, you know, your dexter splatter patterns. Like, if he's swinging and then coming up, what you would see is, like, a as it would go across him like that, right, as he would drag things up. So think about that kind of stuff. But color-wise, yeah, good. All right, Alan, uh, doing some Sisters for Kill Team. First time doing anything sci-fi. Just wanted your thoughts on the Black Power Armor overall composition. Yeah, so the Black Power Armor looks okay. Needs a little more contrast. I would say the same for everything on here, so continue pushing that. I have some videos on painting Black Armor. I have many videos on painting Black Armor, so go check those out. Uh, compositionally, she's fine. Like, the cream with the red and the black, it's a very standard Sisters color scheme. I have, I have no issue with any of your composition. That all looks fine. We just need to keep pushing those... Like, the, the contrast on this is not near high enough on basically anything. So we need to go look at that. I, I have black armor. I have painting red and stuff like that. So check out those videos, and, and that'll get you in the right direction. But yeah, she looks good. It's She'd definitely be a, a proud member of the Army. The hair is my favorite part. I think you did a really nice job on the hair, Alan. So well done. All right, Syrian. First time posting. Master of Possession. Only painting a few months. Looking for some general CNC. Would love to push my painting as much, much as possible. Sure. So... Much of what I've already said many times, and this is going to apply, uh, you know, more contrast, more variation of value and hue, especially in the bone and the black armor and the red. All of those things are too flat. Watch any of my videos on contrast. Go watch Trevarian's videos on contrast. You know, we've both done a lot of exploration of this concept. Now, let's talk about your fire, because um, that's the piece of feedback here I'm going to give you very specifically. That fire is not fire. Fire doesn't have red in it, okay? Here, I'm going to prove it to you right now. Show me the red. Okay? Like, a torch burning doesn't create red. Um, Ferrari red, real red, should be nowhere near your your flame. When things... you It should go like a white hot, white yellow, to a small amount of normal deep yellow, to a medium amount of orange, because most of the fire is going to look orange like that. And then you can have a tiny amount of deep red brown that goes into black to show carbonation, right? And I mean, this is pretty easy to see. Like, just Google campfire, All right? Like, where's the red? I'm not seeing it, right? It's there in the toy because that's what it looks like when you paint red. It looks like a toy, right? But when you look at these fires, you know, if you're trying to capture, like, the carbonation to smoke and stuff like that, then you can use just a little bit of soft red, but it needs to be like a deep red, brown, black, and transition into the carbonation, into the smoke, right? Like this kind of stuff where you're getting into the smoke, okay? So that's going to be my specific feedback for you. Hope that helps. I also have videos on painting fire where I go over all this. All right, John, first time posting. I planted a skeleton lord to work on weathering effects in OSL. Sure. So the OSL is okay. Um, the eyes glow okay. The, it comes out way too far. His eye glow would not be casting out to this. If it, if, it, if it casts the light out this far, it should be way brighter and everything else would be way more in shadow. If you just had the glow right around the eyes, it would sell more because you've got a bright central thing and then a dark ring. We just we went too far with it. Um, now, as to the weathering, uh, this fig doesn't really look like it's doing you a huge amount of favors. It's a very soft fig as far as detail goes. The weathering looks okay. Um, you know, look into the weathering videos I have. They're not weathered in a reasonable way. Like, weathering has to be random, but it has to be applied in a random way that would happen by the dictates of nature and the usage of the thing, right? So um, that's what I would say there. Like, the, the blades would be not weathered. They would be brighter because he's chopping people with them, and so they would have steel scraped away, and they would still be metallic. The weathering would happen in the non-areas. It would be a lot darker. We'd need more deep browns in the shadows, you know, oranges to make things pop, stuff like that. That happens along edges wherever water collects, you know, things like that. Um, so that's my advice to you. Go go check out my videos on weathering. Um, everything's there, so you can, you can check those out. Okay. 
Constantinos, first time posting. I'm painting a non-metallic metal Custodes army for a high tabletop standard. That is a tough two. That is a tough two things to put together. Let me just say that right now. Like, high tabletop means using metallics. You go into non-metallic metal to sell non-metallic metal. It has to go to a very high level, which means you're almost naturally in display painting. But okay. Uh, looking for some tips on how I can paint non-metallic gold on larger models such as dreadnought spikes and tanks. Yeah, I mean the. Okay. So the challenge here is this isn't non-metallic. It just it doesn't sell because there's not enough color. There's not enough contrast. There's not enough variation, right? Like you, you've got the basic basic colors down, but you're going like maybe two to four and there's not enough actual gold like ochre in there to sell it, right? And, and that's the challenge. Like when you try to do this kind of thing in a tabletop way, it just doesn't sell because non-metallic has a very, very, very high floor, okay? Like I'm not trying to crap on your dreams. I'm really not. But if you want a non-metallic army, then you prepare for a display army where each fig takes 20 hours. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make this real for you. If you want a non-metallic army that sells, then it's 20 hours min per fig. That's the buy-in. And that's not great-looking non-metallic metal. That's, like, passable. Okay? And, and that's because to get non-metallic, it's a matter of properly balancing the colors having all the edges highlighted they all need to go to white you have to have the right highlights in the right places everything has to be and especially on a model like this that's all gold you know and and that your your point is well reasoned on the bigger models it's only going to become more of a challenge right because they have all sorts of complicated highlight situations so you know my like i have lots of videos on non-metallic you can go and watch them my best advice for you is to really think deeply about this. As someone currently painting an all non-metallic army, right now I am doing that. And it takes me about me, who paints a lot of non-metallic over a very long career and has painted thousands and thousands of figures. Okay? It takes me about 20 hours per fig. 15 if they're a smaller fig. To make that effect sell. And it's not perfect non-metallic metal. Like, I'm not competition level non-metallic. It's just passable. Okay? So I would really think deeply about that. I'm not normally one to like crap on people's dreams or yucky or yum, but it's it's like saying, okay, what you're saying here with this kind of a project is, hey, I'm training for the Olympics. I figure I'm going to put 30 minutes a day into it. No. <laughs> you don't get to the Olympics on 30 minutes a day. Those are, those are, those are not, th those don't connect like that, right? So things like that to sell just require an immense amount of effort. That's why like using true metallics, but then doing them in a non-metallic style, that you can lower the barrier way, 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 way down and still have something that pops and looks awesome, right? And still has that effect. So it's not just a big gold nothing. Like if this was me and I was doing custodes, there's no way I would ever do this, attempt this army in non-metallic. I would do this army in a in metallic in a in true metallics in a non-metallic style. So because right now, like, it doesn't sell. You don't have enough of the main color, there's not enough one, there's not enough highlights, there's not enough shadows, the highlights aren't in the right places. Like, I'm not I don't want to beat you up. Right? But that's the problems. Um, so I'll I'll let you deal with that as you will, Constantinos. It's it's tough. It's a tough thing you've said you're gonna do. And that's your first time posting too, so I'm being a real jerk, but I'm sorry, man. I I gotta give you the straight story. I don't wanna send you down a bad road. All right, Carlos, uh, painting silver that looks like silver. Uh, every video on the subject treats it like steel, and it's not base. I tried to go for the look of Cursed City Tiles, but I don't know how it clashes with the model. Um, sure. So I think this guy looks nice. Um, yeah, he's fun. I will say if you're talking about... I'm not sure what you mean by silver that looks like silver. Um, like, the metallics here... I would watch some of my videos on metallics. You said all videos. I mean, my videos don't. I very much treat silver like silver and steel like steel. I'm not sure the purple super works for me completely honestly because I don't know what that reflection is meant to be capturing or what it's doing. There's also, like, it just goes into this bright silver and there's no higher highlight. It doesn't pass back into shadow in any way. The skin looks nice. That's the part of it that I think works the best for me. The hair is flat. Um, the gold is okay. I, I think part of the problem here is we're using metallics that just aren't very good like there's lots of really big flake in them and it just kind of destroys the effect and makes it look rough 
Um, like I can just see the pigment from space on these guys. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a challenge perhaps. Um, but I like the shadows and highlights you're doing on the gold. I think they need to be smoothed a little more, but that's my, I like that part quite a bit. The skin is my favorite part. Even a little more purple, a little more red in there is what I would say, but it looks really good. The sword basically doesn't work for me because I don't know what it's meant to be doing. It's not reflecting the ground. I don't know what sky it's reflecting. I don't know what color. I don't know what's motivating that purple. It's just kind of there. And it doesn't go dark enough to be a shadow. It just feels like purple. Like It feels like purple light reflecting on steel, not a purple shadow. So that's the challenge. Hope that helps. All right, Joseph. Push my grimdark skill as far as I could go. Open any critique. I want to know what I need to do to push my next model to a new level. So he is very grimdark. A um, lot of rust, a lot of things like that. I mean, if you're going for Grimdark, you're pretty much there. It's very rusty. It's very rusty, crusty goodness, right? What do you want to do? Have more, like, if you're trying to take Grimdark to the ultimate next level, then what we need is more things like dripping goo and blood, you know, in, in, used in things like that. And the bone needs more contrast, right? So it really pops out as this, as this thing that stands out, right? Um, so having little areas of extremely high contrast where, where there's just the slightest bit of cleanliness, little scratches and dashes in the armor that catch light on edges and stuff like that, more tones into the verdigris to show all the different types and layers of rust that are there, that's going super into the grimdark. So those kinds of things is what I'd recommend for you, Joseph. I mean, it's it's a you're already very grimdarky, but you know you can you can it's it's a super grim dark model. So just think about how you want that to be. Um, I would also say with your verdigris, you're very much in just like a turquoise color. You want to vary that more as well. You want turquoise, you want blue-green, you want true sort of like Nilic or Goss Blaster type of color, those kinds of things as well. All right, Bran, entry into the mini painting contest in the intermediate category, input on the overall presentation for competition. Sure. Uh, so the dress does not read a sheer because not enough is coming through. Um, you need more skin. It has to feel like a more skin tone. I have videos on painting sheer cloth of a woman in a dress. So go check that out. Uh, the, there's not enough contrast, like the stone and the, the gravestone and stuff like that doesn't, it doesn't there. The skin itself is very flat. It's still very rough by the way too, which is strange. Like you want, I don't know if maybe you got a bad prime or something like that, but it looks very rough. Um, the um so like with the face you want to just a lot more contrast of value and hue across both the face especially but all of the skin and then the blue dress as well if it's sheer then there should be a lot more deeper colors that are captured in there right where if it's not showing the skin underneath then it's going to be an extremely deep shadow right so that's kind of my feeling on all that hope that helps uh, Matt, submission for the October review, going for some heavily weathered armor on this, and despite being a bit flat, I'm reasonably happy with how it turned out. I feel like the skin is missing something, but I don't know what. All right, so let's talk about that skin. So, um, yes, the skin is missing variation of hue, uh, and a little bit of value. It, it has, you've got some nice purple and red in places, but it's not, it's not, especially the value, it's not following any reasonable shade pattern. So we still need to bring the shadow into it. It also could, with this kind of skin, it behooves you to do things like texture. With things like the buboes where you've got the yellow, those need to have red around them. They need to fade. It's it's sickened skin. It goes from like, you know, uh, slight skin tone into slight purple, into a red, into a blistering red, into the yellow, right? Like that's the kind of stuff that needs to happen that's going to create that variation of hue. And then on things like under his flappy flaps of his big bulging breast fat, you know, there's got to be like more shadow in there because it's it's a very shadowed thing, right? Like shadow, light, right? And we didn't capture that shadow anywhere under here, that kind of stuff. So we just need more value contrast as well. So there you go. Hope that all helps. All right, next up, uh, Matt, different Matt. Uh, a couple of simple pointers on this guy going to be painting the dismounted version. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity. Sure. So, uh, let's see if we're going to zoom in here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think in general, my main point is going to be more contrast. Pretty much the same thing I say to almost every review because it's always the case that nobody has enough contrast. Um, 
the bone is very flat. The green is very flat. The magenta does not have enough life in it. And the gray skin does not go far enough or integrate enough other colors. So variation of both hue and value as per normal. I would work in some other colors into the gray skin. Things like more purples or blues. It feels like you've got a little bit in there. Push that farther. Push up into higher highlights. The model on the mount feels especially flat. Um, like the mount himself, like the bone is very flat. The, te the sort of turquoise skin is very flat. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of stuff I would focus on if I was you, Matt. So hope that helps. All right. Uh, Hen Henke. Henke? I don't know. Sure. Uh, okay. For this figure, I'm looking for my tabletop standard hero. Do you have any tips where I should put more time in the future to improve readability contrast on the battlefield? Sure. I mean, for pure tabletop quality, it's, he's Okay. Um, you know, I would focus more on a clean paint job. But part of the problem here is like this cloak is way, way too still messy. Like we didn't bother to get down a good base coat there. So that's problematic. Things like the, the fur and the feathers. It feels like we could have done some dry brushes to bring out more contrast there. Um, the metal itself feels pretty like it was like you washed it with some bright or some color and then just did silver all over the whole thing. Um, a little more contrast in the steel, which you could get through quickly through just a quick wet blend would be a good way to go. And then finally, make sure you keep your paint job clean. Like I can see some red spot there and stuff like that, right? So that's kind of my advice for you when it comes to, you know, getting it to tabletop quality. Good tabletop quality focuses on cleanliness and punch. So when you've got heavy textures, you know, get out that dry brush and go to work and bring out those textures. It's a few seconds of work and it adds a lot of readability and contrast to the miniature. All right, next up, Stu. Uh, all right. So this, I love this shield maiden dwarf. I think she's really good. This is such a great figure. Uh, this is like my only dwarf I've ever seen sculpted. I like, I think she's awesome. Um, Stu, I think this looks really nice. Um, I like the shadow, uh, on the side of the face from the, where she has the shield up. I think that's a nice cast shadow. Like you're capturing that set into shadow. Well, um, I feel like the other side of her face here on this line could like here could be a little more highlight. We need a little more color variation of hue in her face, a little more rosiness to her cheeks. I mean, she doesn't need to be wearing makeup, but she's, you know, there's there's red in, in people's cheeks. Um, I mean, I'm not wearing any makeup, and my face has a lot of red to it, right? Um, especially under her eyes, and that's just it, more color and tone under her eyes here. You want to, like, set this into a little more shadow, bring this into a little more red, and then highlight this area up as well. So you create a single highlight that goes down, because that part of her eyelid is going to catch light and be like a shadow reflection. Uh, sorry, so it'll be like light, small shadow, light, shadow. Like, it's just boom, 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 creating those back and forths. Um, I can see a little more texture in the dress. Uh, I like the axe, and I like the way you've cat rendered the, the axe light and stuff like that. I think that looks really nice. Um... The hair looks good, though we could push the stranding on it farther. It's it, like you've you've captured kind of the the highlight fairly decently, but I feel like it like I like this this light right here. I think that's nice, but we could go. It, we need more individual strand work. I think is what I would say. But overall, she looks really nice, man. I think she's a you did a great job uh, rendering this fig, and you should be pretty proud. She she looks fun. Uh, she's a beautiful fig. So there you go. All right, Mike, first step at painting something at display comp level. If you were a judge at a competitions, what notes would you have for me? Sure. Okay. Uh, the lightning looks pretty good. We need some sharper, thinner lines that are still in somewhat white as well, running through the center of the blue. Lightning is really hard to render on a sword. It takes a lot of back and forth work. I like your blue glazes. I like your areas where it's hitting. I think that looks nice. We need more thinner, thinner, hyper thin lines. Um, going down to the guy here, uh, yeah, I mean, he looks good overall. Um, some of the things aren't rendered to the same levels as everything else. That's the issue. You spend a lot of time on the armor, and I like how a lot of it looks. I like how you're resolving a fair amount of the highlights and trying to capture that. But then I've got things like the gold. All the gold looks quite flat. It's just kind of there and existing. Um, you know, at this point, again, like I've said before, your red, you took this red to like an incredibly high highlight into the yellow. The red is more highlighted and has more value contrast than your gold, because you're just yeah, I mean, you just have this flat kind of gold. Um, it just it doesn't have enough silver in it. It doesn't have enough highlight. It doesn't have enough reflection. Right, like that's gold. It's very bright. It's very life giving. I also don't like this gold color you've you've chosen here. I mean, it's sort of a personal taste, but it's a very flat, dead gold. It doesn't match the life of the rest of your piece. 
Um, the uh, so those are all things that would stand out to me on it. The piece is very clean, as near as I can tell. So things are look look nice. Like I like the rivets, I like stuff like that. Stuff like these areas here aren't rendered well enough. Like this little box should have um, texturing and stuff like that on it. As should the grenade. Um, as should this this whatever this thing is should be doing something more than what it is. Like it looks very flat and boring and uninteresting. I don't even know what it is, and you know, it just it needs more rendering. Um, that kind of stuff with the face down here of the dead. Mm, I don't know whatever that bad guy is. The dead bad guy. Um, I like him. I like his face. A little bit of cleanup, especially on stuff like the teeth. Uh, I don't quite love how exactly that resolved out there. Like, that looks a little weird. Might just be the picture. But a little more, like, bruising or stuff like that into the head because it did get sliced off by that giant sword could be good. Resolving the individual levels in the sword hilt. So shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight, and each piece of leather wrap would be another thing I would catch. Uh, overall, this is a very nice piece. You just keep pushing. All right, next up. Uh, took your advice, start and try to decide to try something new instead of constantly facing the gray tide. Um, any tips on signature demon at white skin? Yes, go watch my video on painting demon at skin. That would be my best piece of advice. Again, you've overexposed to this. So I'm just, I'm going to send you videos. Like It's very hard for me to judge, but here's the things I can see. Go watch my video on painting demon at skin. Go watch my video on exploring colors purple and how to paint purple. Because you're like, what we need to do, we don't have the right transitions here. Things are really hard in their lines. I love you stepping out and trying new things. Good, that's the first step. We didn't quite hit it, but that's okay. You've got like, you've got a good value sketch. That's good. You've got a good value sketch. Like you took it to the right value. Now we've just got to resolve it. Also, when you take pictures, indirect lighting. Again, I have videos on taking pictures. There's an article on GW's website. Please take proper pictures. It makes things my life a lot easier. Okay, Chris, uh, first GW model inspired by October. Aside from any issue that stands out to you, two parts love to get feedback on. Face and eyes, which try to make pop more. Uh, and the second is the true metallics and weathering the blade and the gun. Sure. So the skin needs to be smoothed down a lot. It's very roughly resolved. Um, so like it feels like there's a lot of, I don't know, maybe dry brushing or something going on here. I'm not sure. Like Everything is really, really rough. I don't know why everything is so very rough. Um, because that's my main issue right now. I mean, I'm just going to say that right out of the gate. Like, I don't know if you're not, if you're working in like extremely dry paint, are you not thinning your paints? Are you not mixing in the appropriate amount of water? I'm not sure, but it looks really, really rough. And that has, that doesn't, ha like, you don't want your model to look like it's just been dry brushed all over the place, right? Um, and if you're going for stippling or something like that, and that's why it's really rough, then you need to glaze those, all that stuff all together. I have videos on painting orc faces and skin. Um, so, you know, my best advice for you is look at how I paint orc faces and skin. Go watch those videos. You need to integrate reds, pinks, things like that to create more life in the face and draw the attention. The problem with an orc face is you're dealing with a bunch of bright green yellows all over the thing. There's nowhere to direct the eye. So through the integration of reds and red pinks into the face, especially in the ears, the nose, the eyebrows, the lips, you draw attention. Remember, human eyes track toward red, so you draw more attention to the face. Now, as to the uh, weapon, I have a video on weathering orc weapons because I have a, a lot of videos. <laughs> Go watch my how to paint orcish weapons video. Um, you know, the scratches are a little too big. It doesn't resolve enough deep shadow. The part that's highlighted isn't quite there, and you'd want a little bit more brown and stuff like that into the into the rust weathering to capture, like, where the blade isn't striking and where water is collecting. That's where it's going to show you and, and show sort of that brown color. So there you go. All right. Uh, I, Ar Arvenman. Okay, this is what I painted last month. Kingdom Death Miniature in 30 millimeter. Try adding texture, simple free end to the cloth. Clay peas with this one, but still just want some general feedback. Sure. Um, she looks very nice. Um, she's resolved in a very clean Kingdom Death style. Um, so I, you know, that, that all is fine with me. Uh, I do think, I, I like the, I like the cloth dots. I think that's fine. Some of the little elements, like, <coughs> that stand out to me are things like the, the toes, not having enough shadow resolved. And it's basically you're missing a lot of four and five from the model. There's not enough deep shadows. I like a lot of your highlights, but a lot of your elements just don't have enough shadow. Ironic in a world like Kingdom Death where it's all about light and shadow. Like in between the toes, there's not enough shadow. Like look at my fingers, right? Look at how dark the line is in between my fingers, right? Now look at her hand, her fingers and her toes, right? It's nothing like that. 
right? So capturing that a little bit more in her cloth, you know, in the lower parts where maybe the texture's more hidden, deeper shadows, things like that is the main part that jumps out to me. I think the texturing in the cloth looks really nice. I think the tones you're using, like the variation of hue in the skin looks good. I like the pink stuff, like the, the sort of pink element to it. I think that works for me. So good stuff there. All right, uh, Wendy, uh, first time post, I love painting this earth elemental open to critiques and what I can improve. Sure, so um, nice looking earth elemental, um, like the wood a lot. I actually really like how you've resolved the wood. My challenge is the stone is pretty bland. Um, I have a video on painting realistic weathered stone. I would go give that a look um, because you, but the, my, my issue is here, this guy is literally a, a rock trapped up in nature. So there should be greens and browns and purples and reds and stuff like that in the stone, resolving other colors. Like when stone is, there's very little pure gray stone in the world because stone exists in nature. Nature leaves residue and organic elements and it has color to it and hue moss and you know those kinds of elements so go check out my video on painting uh, realistic weathered stone um that's going to give you a, a good a good take but i really like how you resolved the the um the trees i think those look really nice i'm i'm digging those so that part of it great absolutely fantastic we just need to punch up the skin with more variation of hue or the the stone skin yeah you get it all right, Jacob, general feedback on this figure. This is my first attempt at non-metallic metal gold. Is it working? Uh, okay. Uh, it's okay. You don't have enough one and two. There's not enough highlight to it. There's not enough specular light catches. So again, go and check out my videos on, on non-metallic metal gold. You have to run the full gamut, one through five, control the volumes, make sure you have the right tones. Like non-metallic metal is super complicated, right? It's a thing you got to keep trying. You, you've got a good like two, three, four, five, and it's smoothish, but there's not enough edge highlights. There's not enough white. There's not enough light catches and specular highlights where, where things are, are going to just dot or reflect towards your eye, stuff like that. Some of the pieces I talked about earlier, like this leg, there'd be a light line here, and you're mostly capturing that, but it doesn't go near bright enough. It doesn't have the edges highlighted for things like that. So that's my main challenge there. Um, now, as far as taking all the elements to the same level, I think you're doing better. I can definitely see the, the more focus and everything. Fur cape still seems quite bland. There's no, not really doing anything to, to spice up my life there. Um, but that's kind of the only place that I really see that. Most of the other stuff you took to, you know, pretty much the same level of detail. So you keep pushing. Um, things like the face could go farther. The hair could go farther. You still want to draw attention up here on the fig. So that's kind of my advice. Uh, saying, hey, back after the submission. Yeah, sure. Super cool here. I, I, I painted this guy as well. Um, the non-metallic gold doesn't work for me for the reasons I just said in the last review, if that's what you were going for. It's not enough white, not enough high highlight, that kind of thing. What does work for me very much here is the sort of black leather armor. It could be smooth a little bit, Sang, but I, I it's fine. Uh, like it's rough, but you know, I, I, I would thin out those edges and, and do a little transition in between the two. We need to smooth things down, bring them together, soften the edges, and then things like that. The brown cloak being rough is fine because it's meant to be this really rough leather texture. I think the triumph here is the face. I really like his face. I like the different tones you've integrated in there. It captures the highlights well. I think that's very strong. So, well done. All right, next up, Rich. Okay, uh, looking for some feedback on this overall piece for a couple things. Yeah, so like much what I've said here, not enough contrast. I would focus on cleanliness, smoothing out the paint. The glowing eyes aren't glowing eyes. Watch my glowing eyes video if you want to see how to do glowing eyes. But again, brightest, light around two. One, two, three, two. Go watch the video and that'll make sense. Um, but like, you know, more contrast in everything. The tubes, the armor, the cloak, the cloth. Uh, both light and shadow is lacking here. Um, I like the does. I like the base. I like that you brought the sort of dirty sand up onto the cloak, and up into the the skulls and onto his feet and stuff like that. So that works fine for me. But yeah, I mean, our our, our main challenge here is is clear. It's 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 a contrast game. We got We got to take that a lot farther and make sure that the individual elements are rendered in a clean fashion. So cleanliness and contrast. The old C and C. All right, Michael, uh, painted this for a local store competition where you drew three colors and had to use them predominantly on the model. Included a pick with the three colors I drew. Yeah, this is fun. Um, yeah, it's a it's a neat rendering of it with just those like getting technical gloom. Oh my god, or like that Nighthawk gloom or whatever. What up? 
what a pick, man. Um, yeah, this guy came out fun. Like, again, you're in a lot of direct light for a simple three-color model. Yeah, it's fine. I assume the purple had to be... You, you had, like, access to that for, for just the sword or whatever. So, I mean, you didn't really have a shadow color. So, yeah. I, You know, it's three paints. You can't do a lot with three paints, sadly. Um, especially three weird paints like this. Two, two very bright colors. So, honestly, given what you had, I think this is a tremendous success. I think you resolved it fantastically. Okay, Bryce. Uh, 25th miniature I painted... Uh, sure. So what did you do well? The, um, well, let's take a focused picture. That's a good place to start. But I like the way you're trying to resolve the, the red cloak. Now, what do we, that, that looks good. You're trying to put in texture. You're trying to put in contrast. You need to push a little farther, but it's nice. Now, what do we need to do more? Well, a lot. So we're not resolving all the individual elements. There's not enough shadow. There's not enough contrast. I would, like I said earlier, man, you're, you're at a point here where you're just starting and, what I would do is watch some videos on contrast, either for myself, Trevarian has a great one, that kind of thing. Like, honestly, go watch Trevarian's two Blood Bowl uh, tutorials. Um, the one where he, like, his first Blood Bowl, to, I don't know, I think he did two different Blood Bowls. Like, one about the, the initial human and orc, and then where he kicked him up the next level. That is the video you need to watch. Um, I have a bunch like this as well, but, but the specific place you're at is where you, that's going to that's gonna give you the answer of where you need to go. Now, the, you know, one thing I'll say is never just paint, like, you have to paint every individual element. Like, these are leather straps. This is a glove, right? This is some other material. Like, things all have to be painted. They can't just be all sprayed gold and we called it a day, right? So that's kind of the thing I would say there. Like, the model doesn't feel finished. So there's the issue. All right, Balint, uh, with your Termagant, um, you are absolutely right. As you said, there's not near enough uh, contrast on this. Like, it needs to go a lot farther. Also, don't do a huge base like this for a tiny little guy like this. It's too much base for too little fig. There is a golden ratio problem with that. Um, like, it's too big for the base. That's that's the issue. You're, it just ends up looking messy, and, like, the base is hard to resolve with my eye and what's going on. You want to stay within the confines of the base. And the reason that that base tends to work is because it fits that golden ratio pretty well, that 1 to 1.7. And it, you know, this like giant piece shooting up and all this other stuff is just too much. But yes, a lot more contrast in the red, the purple, everything. Like, keep going. Again, that, that has to go a lot farther. All right. Uh, Jasper. Uh, so, the non-metallic metal. Same things I've said basically every time here. Not enough contrast, doesn't go far enough. We have primary light, but we don't have the secondary reflections. There's not enough specular lights, light catches, things like that. Um, and so, like, we've got to take a lot more value contrast, a lot more contrast of hue, and, and really push it. I have lots of videos on non-metallic metal. Um, you can go watch, like, go watch a Richard Gray video where he's painting non-metallic because he does all the time. Watch how he does his primary and secondary lights. Look at how far he pushes everything. But that's where we need to go. I mean, our contrast is way, way, way too shy on this. Another piece, when you're in it, like Archeon, who's normally on a mount with this fig, like be careful of posing figs like this. It feels like, okay, what do I get with this? Oh, he's about to fall. That's what it looks like to me. He's going to slide off that rock and just fall. Like the Lord of the Apocalypse is going like, whoa, and going to have a Scooby-Doo accident, right? Because he just looks unbalanced. His toe is somewhat hanging off the edge. Like he doesn't look like he's in an action pose. He looks like he's about to slip because his legs aren't braced like you would brace to stand yourself on that. He's because you the, the the fig wasn't meant to stand in that direction. If you're on a rock, you're gonna stand like this, right? He's leaning forward in a way that just like his center of gravity does not work in the way you've placed him. Humans are sort of again subconsciously gonna recognize that. It just looks like he's horribly off balance. So there you go. Final piece from uh, Mezik's son, four years old. Well done, buddy. Keep painting. It's looking fun. Um, if you're starting with this at four, you've got a long, great road ahead of you. Keep at it. Fantastic job. Well done. Keep at those orcs. Get a whole get a whole army of those guys on the table. But you're doing well, buddy. You keep at it. That brings us to the end. So there you go. Uh, overall, I do hope you enjoyed this. Um, thank you so much uh, for, to everybody who submitted. Um, thank you to everybody who had the courage to submit this month. Single figure is always a really big month. I appreciate everybody submitting. Um, but as always, uh, if you want to join us, you can down below. 
uh, find the link. Go ahead and click that. Remember, you have to answer all three questions. Uh, next month's category is Diorama. I look forward to see what people come up with. But as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.